public speaking planning preparation and presentation public speaking is a form of communication in which a person speaks face to face to a relatively large audience in public speaking the speaker speaks in a fairly continuous manner further the focus of the event seems to be on a single product which is the speech itself those who communicate with large audiences most effectively however recognize that they are involved more with a process than simply with a product enhance public speaking skills by paying attention to first selection of topic next audience analysis next researching the topic next planning and drafting the speech next organizing the speech next presenting the speech verbal and non verbal next developing confidence and overcoming fear it is important to remember that although these are parts of a process there are no specific steps to follow in exact order ordinarily the speaker will not begin with one section finish it go on to the second section finish it and so on instead he might begin by analyzing the audience then choose a tentative topic topic and purpose do some planning and research narrow the topic think of a good idea for an introduction and write a draft and go back and analyze the audience once again he will undertake more research and so on next topic is selection of topic the speaker's first step in formal speech making is to determine the purpose and topic of his presentation in some cases he is assigned a topic usually one within his area of specialization in fact when he is asked to make a speech on a specific topic it is likely to be based on his expert knowledge in that area if the speaker is not assigned a topic he must find one on his own in his search for a suitable topic he should acquaint himself with the following number 1 background and knowledge any topic which he selects should be one with which he is comfortable ensuring that it is within his area of proficiency number 2 interest of his audience selecting something which his audience can appreciate and understand is vital to the success of one's speech number 3 occasion of the speech or purpose of the speech is the occasion a common a commemoration of a historic event or a monthly meeting of an executive club an annual meeting of an association of beauticians etc whatever topic is selected it should fit the occasion a speech about automated banking technologies might be quite appropriate for a group of young entrepreneurs but not for retired pensioners the purpose of public speech is related to the occasion and it is identified while selecting the topic the purpose may be one to inform or instruct here the goal is to clarify secure understanding and explain a process issue or procedure to to persuade the goal here is to create willingness among the audience to accept the idea proposal and claim as presented by the speaker 3 to encourage here the goal is to raise the spirit of the audience to motivate listeners and to inspire them for to es- to entertain in social occasions parties anniversaries cultural programs etc one may have to speak in order to entertain people next topic audience analysis <laughs> one requirement of making a good speech is to know about the kind of audience available for the speech the content and manner of presentation of speech will depend upon the kind of audience and their attributes like education qualification age etc 
The speaker should study his audience before and during the presentation in the manner narrated below. Preliminary analysis. In the analysis of the audience before the speech, the speaker should research for the audience's characteristics that will affect his presentation. For example, size of audience is likely to influence how formal or informal should the speech be. As a rule, large audiences require more formality. The audience's personal characteristics also affect how one must structure the speech. Characteristics such as as sex, education, experience, and knowing the core topic can determine how a speaker presents his message through choice of words needed for illustrations and the level of details required. The speaker should adapt his speeches to suit his target audiences. This knowledge about the audience is the first step in adaptation. Number one is the following questions regarding age need to be addressed. 1. What is the general age of the audience members? 2. How wide is the age range? 3. Does the audience include different age groups who need to be addressed differently? 4. What effect might the age of the audience have on the topic and purpose? What are the main points which the speaker plans to speak on? It is important to understand the effect of as examples, illustrations, and visual age which the speaker may seek further. As will also have an effect on the language which the speaker intends to use. Audience analyze, analysis is important. As is the most important criteria and one should keep the following in mind. 1. Children may like stories. 2. High school children may prefer visual age. 3. College students need informative presentations. 4. Young adults want progressive and innovative viewpoints. 5. Middle-aged people tend to be conservative for they prefer status quo issues and listen to them with interest. 6. Old people may be interested in news and views. Number 2. Sex. The following questions relating to sex help the speaker to analyze the audience. 1. Does the audience comprise of all males and all females or predominantly one sex? 2. Do males and females view the topic differently? 3. Have they got different interests? experiences and knowledge about the topic. 4. How will this influence the way in which the speaker will develop his topic and purpose? Number 3. Background and attitudes. 1. How much knowledge or experience does the audience bring to this topic? 2. Do their experiences and opinions differ so much from the speaker that he must adjust the way and Construct the speech accordingly. 3. Will the audience identify with the speaker or see the speaker as an outsider? 4. Does he expect the audience to be hostile even before he speaks to them? 5. What is the ethnic, racial and socio-economic composition of the audience? 6. What does this composition mean for his topic and purpose? 7. Are there any implications here for development of his speech? 4. Appearance. appearance Regarding appearance, the following questions are important. 1. Is his appearance similar to that of his audience? 2. Is he better or worse dressed, more formal or more casual than they are? 3. How are they likely to expect the speaker to be dressed? 4. Whether their appearances in relation to the speaker cause him to feel inferior or superior? Number 5. Context. Two specific questions are considered in this context. They are 
1 what about the place time and occasion for his speech 2 do any of these impose restrictions on what his audience might consider appropriate or create expectations that he has to take into account analysis during presentation audience analysis continue as the speaker starts making his speech this is also known as the feedback phase this phase of audience this phase of audience analysis keeps the speaker information about how a listener is receiving his words with this information he can adjust his presentation to improve the communication result the eyes and ears of the speaker will help him get this feedback information following is the checklist which may help the speaker to analyze the audience during the presentation first facial expressions of the audience will tell him how listeners are reacting to the message next from smiles blank stares and movement he will get an indication of whether they understand or agree with the message or not next from their sounds or silence he can guess whether they are listening next if questions are being asked by the audience in order the speaker can learn how the message is coming across next by being alert the speaker can learn much from his audience and direct his speech accordingly next topic researching the topic after the purpose of the speech is determined the speaker should gather the information which will from the basis of his speech he may select the main ideas and then gather additional information that will be in support of the core area core idea in some cases this involves mentally and logically by charging supporting experiences for development of ideas sometimes he will have to conduct primary research in a library or by running through company records with some topics he may need to consult colleagues or people from other companies this list of core ideas may be gathered in a haphazard or disorganized manner later the workable ideas can be put together into a unified team in short he has to do whatever is necessary to get the information he needs by organizing his speech once the speaker decides on a topic for his pre presentation he can determine the main points that will serve as the basis of his speech he can discover what they might be by simply asking him some questions about his presentation topic a few of them are as follows first if his speech is informative he will primarily ask what and how questions such as what are the main themes of this topic and how can he develop his theme next if his speech is persuasive or intended to promote common feelings he will ask more of why related questions such as number one why the audience should be interested in this topic two why should they agree to what i say next in developing the top points which he intends to make he should always keep his audience in mind first who are they next how much do they already know about his topic next how do they think next what do they think about his topic if this audience is going to be interested in listening to him he will need to adapt his speech to them and present them with new ideas or at least present old ideas in a new light this kind of research on the topic and his audience will help the speaker to draft a speech and make an impressive presentation before his target audience next to planning and drafting a clear vision of his objective and good amount of research on the topic will help the speaker to gather enough ideas to plan and draft his speech when preparing for a public speech a speaker should consult a wide variety of sources when the research has been completed the speaker should organize all the information 
arguments and evidence into a complete outline. Its purpose is to help the speaker to understand both sides of the speech issue. It also serves as a source of the specific information which the speaker will include in the outline for his or her public speeches. Although variations are sometimes appropriate, usually he should follow the time-honored order in planning the speech. Number 1. Introduction Number 2. Body Number 3. Conclusion Let us discuss in detail Number 1. Introduction It is rightly said, a good beginning is half-ending. And first impression is the last impression. So it becomes imperative that the speaker makes an impressive beginning to capture the attention of the audience. Regarding introduction, following is the order in which some tips would be. 1. Establish report by making a reference to A. Chairman's remarks B. Previous speaker's words C. Occasion of meeting D. Showing pleasure and happiness 2. Focus attention on A. Raising possible questions B. Listing to facts and figures C. Creating a story D. Making reference to famous personalities E. Mention a proverb or a quotation related to the topic of the occasion other important points to be kept in mind regarding introduction are 1. Although not really a part of the speech, the first words usually spoken are the greetings. The greeting, of course, should fit the audience. Ladies and gentlemen is appropriate for a mixed audience. Gentlemen fits an all-male audience and my fellow Rotarians fits an audience comprising of the members of a Rotary club. 2. The introduction of a speech has the same importance as the introduction of a written report. That is, to prepare the lis listener or reader to receive the message. But the introduction of a speech usually has the additional requirement of arousing interest. Unless the speaker can arouse interest at the beginning, his presentation is likely to fail. The situation is somewhat like that of the sales letter. At least some of the people with whom he wants to communicate are unlikely to be interested in receiving his message. 3. The techniques of attracting interest are limited only by the imagination. In some cases, beginning with a human interest story may be successful. It is said that storytelling has a strong and universal appeal. Humor is another possibility and is probably the most widely used technique. Putting forward basic questions about the issue is also an important technique which involves the audience immediately. immediately. In fact, when the audience gets interested in what he has to say, he can beg begin and skip the attention, gaining opinion. Presentations of technical topics to technical audiences typically begin in such a way. Whether he leads to a statement of the topic or begins with it, his statement should be clear and complete. Number 2. Body Body is the main part of the speech. This contains the main contents for which the, form, the foundation of Foundation has been laid by the introductory part of the speech. The body of the speech is structured according to 1. Purpose 2. Audience The other points to be kept in mind are 1. Begin with easy ideas and substitute difficult explanations with simpler ones. 2. Begin with acceptable ideas and move to newer ones. 3. In incidents should be narrated at a faster pace. 3. Number 3. Conclusion. The conclusion should hold attention. It may take the shape of a question or quotation. Only sentences should be and the concluding remarks should not be dragged. The concluding observations are related to 1. Summary of the main theme. 2. Repeat hand.
thanks for invitation. Three, thank the audience for relate to the occasion. Next is draft of debatable topics. For debatable topics or issues, the following parts of a brief may be considered. Number one, statement of the proposition. Number two, introduction. One, importance of the issue or topic. Two, short history of the issue or topic. Three, the main arguments will be brief and precise. A, list the common arguments for the affirmative style. Common arguments are that a proposed sense is needed. The sense is practical. It is desirable and that the advantages of making the sense are greater. B. List the common arguments for the negative side. Common arguments are that the proposed sense is not needed. The sense is impractical and undesirable that the disadvantage of making the sense is greater and that there are so solutions which are better than those proposed by the affirmative side sometimes the speaker may find it undesirable to reveal a position because of the nature of the subject in these cases he may prefer to move into his subject indirectly and to build up his case before revealing his position. He should show this inductive pattern especially when his goal is to persuade or when he needs to move his audience's views from one position to another. But in most business related presentations, a direct statement of the theme early in the speech would be desirable. Number 3. Body this is the longest, most detailed portion. 1. State again each argument for the affirmative. After each argument, list the specific evidence that supports it. Cite also the source for each item of evidence. 2. State again each argument for the negative. After each argument, list the specific evidence that supports it. Cite again the source for each item of evidence. Number 4. Conclusion 1. Summarize the position and arguments of the affirmative side. 2. Summarize the position and arguments of the negative side. Like most reports, a speech usually ends with a conclusion. Here the speaker brings all that he has presented to the audience. He achieves the speech goal and in doing so, he should consider including these three elements in his closing remarks. A. A restatement of his subject. B. A summary of the conclusion or main message. Usually, it is effective to bring the speech of a climatic close by summing up the high points of the speech. He can do this by presenting the concluding message in strong language so that it may gain attention and be remembered. Next topic, organizing the speech. Organizing the body of his speech is much like organizing the body of a report. The speaker takes the entire text and divides it into comparable parts. Then he takes these parts and further divides them. He continues to divide as far as is practical to do so in species. However, he is more likely to use factors as the basis of division than time, place or quantity. The reason is that in most species, his presentation is likely to build around issues and questions that are subtopics of the subject. Even so, subdivisions like time, place and quantity are possibilities. After preparing a brief of a presentation, the speaker is ready to begin the preparation for presenting it. The speaker will organize his presentation and presentation of speech on the basis of the following. Number 1. 
based on his own knowledge and interest. Thus, they still think the topics that he has selected will be interesting to the listeners and engaging to them. This time, ensure that the listener likes the topic. Number two, if this is the first time the speaker has done research or if he has little knowledge of the topic, he will begin by reading some general information taken from an encyclopedia or magazine article. If he knows or can think of any persons who has specialized knowledge about the topic, he must try to interview them. Specific notes are taken on what he reads and learns. Number three, on a piece of paper, the speaker should write his presentation draft. Therefore, he must review it for the speech. Perhaps it is something completely new from that he has already known or spoken on. That does not matter. What does matter is that it is truly the essence of what the speaker wants his audience to gain from the speech. Number four, below his presentation draft, he writes several questions about it, leaving space under each question for an answer. Remember that if this speech is informative, he will primarily ask what and how kind of questions. If his speech is to be persuasive, he will ask more of the questions. Number five, now the speaker must answer each of these questions. These answers will provide him with the key points or major elements. Later on, this will form the basis of his speech. Number six, when he has completed his presentation, it should be shared with a partner or small group. If not, it should be revised as necessary. Number seven, in the end, the speaker should speak the main points of his presentation draft. He needs to completely prepare his speech by carefully crafting his conclusions. He should wrap up his ideas and give his audience a sense of completion. It should emphasize his main idea, thesis, and summarize the main points. Next topic, organizing the speaking aids. Organizing the speech also includes putting all his points in a logical sequence and being ready for all queries that may be asked during the speech. While presenting a formal speech, the speaker prepares the manuscript of his speech, speaking notes and visual aids for the purpose of reference beforehand. There are a few guidelines to prepare these aids. These are as follows. Guidelines for a speech manuscript. A speech manuscript is a written document which contains the entire speech in a handwritten or printed format. The following points are important in this regard. Number one, the speech script should be printed on only one side of the paper or card sheet. Number two, both capital and lowercase letters may be used. Four important letters, all capital letters may be used. Number three, the text must have double or triple space. Number four, the pages should be appropriately numbered. Number five, as the speaker finishes reading each page, he may slide it to the side on the podium or shuffle it to the bottom of the stack of pages. Number six, Eye contact is to be maintained with the audience. The speaker should look at them as often as possible without losing concentration. Number seven, the speaker must use pause at appropriate places. There is a tendency to speak too rapidly and run or overlap or repeat ideas together. While reading a manuscript, this needs to be avoided. Next topic. Guidelines for speaking notes. Usually, the speakers do not carry the whole speech to read. They only carry the main points jotted clearly on cards or paper. These notes are called speaker's note. Following are the important guidelines for notes to be prepared for public speech. Number one, the speaker has to prepare brief and concise notes. Notes 
should not distract the listeners index card of 3 into 5 inch r n ideal size and are stiff enough to be handled easily number 2 he should print the information on the cards large enough so that it may be read at a glance from an arm's length number 3 he should write on only one side of each card number 4 he should limit the total number of cards to as few as possible number 5 he should arrange his notes in such a way that the main ideas can be picked up and understood quickly the points that the speaker wants to repeat or emphasize should be underlined capitalized or colored number 6 the cards must be numbered the possibility of dropping the cards just before the speech should be controlled number 7 during the speech the card cards should be kept in one hand in the most inconspicuous a manner as possible if the speaker is using the podium he may put the notes comfortably over there guidelines for using visual aids visual aids enhance the comprehension and attention of listeners The following points points are important in this regard. Number 1, the speaker should feel that a visual aid is relevant and useful. If it is cleverly designed and attractively presented, it should be part of speech as well, not something tack on it, tack on to it. Number 2, the aid is large enough so that the smallest details which the audience wants to see is visible in the room. If the message of the aid is not clear then the aid is a distraction if the transparencies prepared are not neat they will lead to more distractions number 3 the speaker must make the aid neat and attractive it should be appealing enough to hold the attention of the audience but not so attractive that it engages them to the point of distraction he can use computer software to generate graphs and diagrams for example clip art he should remember that the speaker needs pictures that are large enough to be seen by everyone in the audience small computerized pictures that cannot be seen do not facilitate the presentation number 4 if the aid requires the use of special equipment such as a slide projector or a video tape recorder the speaker must make sure that he can operate the equipment just before his speech he should check them to make sure that the equipment is working properly number 5 he should indicate in this in his cards where in his speech he will use his aid and should also practice their use number 6 he should stand in such a way so that he is not blocking or distracting the audience's view of the aid number 7 he should not keep looking at the aid continuously as he talks he should point out his major features in the aid briefly at the same time he must keep his eyes on the audience to see whether they understands his speech and are with him number 8 he should be cautious about distributing materials to be looked at by listeners such activity will probably distract them from his speech instead of aiding communication he may however wish to distribute such materials after his speech next topic presentation of a well prepared speech can go waste if it is not presented well The success of all the efforts put in by the speaker depends on how skillfully he presents it. At this point of time, it will be important for him to decide his technique of presentation. There are three methods of or ways of presenting a speech. Presenting presenting it extemporaneously by reading it or by memorizing it. Ways of delivering the speech extemporaneous presentation it is the most popular and effective method of presentation 
Using this method, the speaker initially prepares his speech. Then he prepares notes and presents the speech from them. This allows him to have good eye contact while he may feel confident having the support of the notes with him. Number 2. Memorize presentation. It is the most difficult method of presentation. For most of us, probably a few speakers actually memorize an entire speech. Memorize speech does have poor display of non-verbal non cues. The fear of forgetting the speech in between is a big hurdle and does not allow the speaker to be at ease. Instead, memorizing key parts and using notes to help through the presentation is a better option. Number 3. Presentation by Reading Usually, the inexperienced speakers use this method, as lack of confidence does not allow them to memorize even a part of the speech. Unfortunately, most of us do not read aloud well. We tend to read in a dull, monotone voice, producing a most uninteresting and lackluster effect. We fumble over words, mispunctuation, marks, and make similar lapses. Many speakers overcome this problem with effort and eliminate it also. While using any of these methods during the course of his presentation, the speaker also has to be aware of how his audience is reacting to his speech. As has already been discussed in the section about audience analysis, the speaker's eyes and ears will give him feedback information. For example, Facial expressions of the audience members will tell him how they are reacting to his message. From smile, blind stares, and movements, the speaker will get an indication whether the listeners understand or agree with his message. Wording also includes nonverbal content. Important aspects related to presentation of speech. A few other aspects relating to presentation of the speech which the speaker should be aware of are number one appearance and bodily actions. Since his listeners are listening to his words, their gaze is also directed at him. What they are seeing is also a constituent of the message and it can have mass effect on the success of his speech. This audience sees the speaker and also what surrounds him. Thus in his efforts to improve the effects of his oral presentations, the speaker should also pay attention to his appearance and bodily actions. Number two, the communication environment. A major chunk of what his audience sees is everything that is around him as he speaks. All of that tends to add to a general impression. This includes physical things like the stage, lighting, and background, and his own skill as a listener will tell him what is important. Number 3. Personal Appearance The personal appearance of the speaker is part of the message. The audience receives most of the non-verbal cues from their making is necessary that he uses them appropriately. Specifically, he should dress appropriately for the audience and the occasion. Number 4. Posture Posture or body position is likely to be the most obvious thing which the audience sees about him. Even if listeners cannot be close enough to detect facial expressions and eye movements, they can see in general the structure and state of the body. The speaker probably thinks that one should tell him what good posture is. He may know it when he sees himself. He should keep his body erect without appearing stiff and uncomfortable. His deportment should be poised, alert and communicative. He should be do all this naturally. The greatest danger with posture is appearing artificial. People may become too artificial by pretending or non-spontaneous by reading books on communication. Number 5. Walking the way the speaker walks before his audience also makes an impression on his listeners. A strong and sure walk both gives an impression of confidence. Walking during the lesson can be both good and bad, depending on how the speaker does it 
through in public space. We rarely find speakers working. Number six, use of voice. Good and effective voice is an obvious requirement of good speaking. Like bodily movements, the voice should not hinder the listener's concentration of the message. Voices that cause such difficulties generally fall into four areas of it. Number seven, avoid a few words or phrases. First, Latin and French words. Next, technical terms. Next, socially un unpleasant words. Number four, cheap, hollow, and slang terms. Next, difficult words. Next, repeating phrases like you see, you know, I mean, and such like. While actually delivering the speech, the speaker may make use of visual aids and notes or his own manuscript. The guidelines for using them have already been discussed in organizing the speech.